Hello? Am I on? Oh, looks like I'm on. I had to turn the phone sideways. For some reason, it wouldn't let me uh, have it horizontal. I didn't uh, advertise this one. I just figured I'd uh, do one. It's looks like it's 10 o'clock, 10 p.m. here. So it should be, uh, I don't know if it's 10 or 11 in the Philippines. I know we had our time change here, so it's going to be a little bit different. But uh, I, I did my fourth chemo back to me in a week again. Uh, real hard to, real hard for me to stand up. This has been like a roller coaster for me. I don't know if this stuff's working or not. Uh, I mean, I don't feel bad or anything like that, but I'm, I'm hardly strength that just to get up from a sitting position. If I'm sitting on a regular height chair, I can't get up by myself. Uh, I went to uh, Parma the other day, the VA at Parma, for some blood work, which everything came back fine. They said, I'm, I'm okay, like to like, everything was good. And uh, I sat down in the chair and twice I had to be helped out of, helped up because I couldn't, I couldn't get up out of my little uh, push cart. It's a little too low for me. No, no strength. Uh, so that's pretty rough, but at least they're coming and picking me up and giving me the rides now. They were giving me a real hard time on that. And, uh, you know, they, they messed up on my income guidelines is why they weren't giving me that. And some lady down at the place is working on fixing that for us. So she got me the ride and I got to turn some paperwork in for her because they have me as a single person making $85,000. So there's no money, no money for me. And instead of, you know, somebody with uh, four dependents and making less than half that. So that's the way it goes. But I was talking to, I was talking to a fellow here. He hit me up on my uh, messenger. He uh, was talking about going to the Philippines and his, his wife. Hi, handsome. Hey, you guys want to see Super Mario? Wait, let me get my head on. All right, and it's bedtime. It's way after 9.30. Hello. There's Super Mario. Okay, come on, go to bed. Okay. Screw you off. It's just alive. Hey, guys, I, I would do this so I could do this now after you go to bed. It's 10 o'clock. We had a hell of a hard time getting Mumu up this morning. He just was like a rag doll and would not open up his eyes right up until just a few minutes before it was time to go to school. We had to put his breakfast in a little plastic baggie. And I'm getting sick of uh, the mornings with him him not waking up, he, he goes into these deep sleeps. That's why they pee. That's why they pee the bed, because they're in such a deep sleep they can't wake up. And he's got that. And uh, so tomorrow morning, we're gonna start waking him up at seven. And if it takes me from seven to 7.30, I'm just gonna do that. I used to wake the kids up by giving them a back rub every morning, but my hands don't work. I still, that's about as far as I can bend them. And uh, they still hurt, so. But I was talking to this, this fellow, and uh, he's got a, uh, his wife's going to have a baby over there, and he says, well, and he's up there, he's, uh, he's older than I am, and he kept telling me that, uh, oh, don't, you know, as soon, soon as he's born, he's an American citizen over there, and this guy's here, and I said, no, sir, he's not, you know, this, and this guy wouldn't listen, he said, no, no, he'll be covered under Social Security, I'm going to get this, and I'm going to get that, blah, blah, blah. And I said, if he was born in the States, but uh, he's not even married to the woman. You know, they're probably going on DNA. He's got a lot of paperwork he's got to do. So guys, if you, if you want to do that, we've, I've been through it. I know a couple other guys have been through it. Uh, don't take the chance. Now, if something happened to him, let's say he passed away, his wife could still get it, but it's going to be a hard road to hold for her to prove it. You know, to prove it for him with the money. Uh, do it do it while you're alive because it's a lot easier for you to do the money in case you need DNA That's 880 bucks, you know, so you gotta watch that Okay, Athena. Hi. I just now reading that. Well, I'm doing okay. I Don't worry about that uh, the drinking things if I give him more to drink Athena, then he wakes up in peace Hey, I'm doing pretty good Paulie Hey hammer Yeah, I'm uh I've been home for a bit now. They were telling me on the phone that when they did my blood work, 
Uh, I told them how, how weak I was right now, and they said, well, we're going to do your blood work, and if the electrolytes are off, we're going to pull you back in the hospital. Well, they called today and said, no, everything's fine. It's just it's just your week. It, you know, it's one of them things I got. Uh, it's more like the muscles in my legs are super sore. Like I ran a marathon. You know, when I did, when I was very young, I did run a 26-mile marathon, and I'm not kidding. I was screwed up for weeks. I don't, I'm not talking screwed up for a couple of days. I'm talking weeks I was messed up. And that's what this feels like in my legs. Uh, my, my thigh muscles are just burnt. Uh, and when I go to stand up, it, it just, and then with my hands, it's hard to help with my hands because I can't put any pressure on them. You know, it hurts like hell. So the couple times that I, just to get off the, you know, it's easy to get off the bed, but getting up out of the chair, I had to get Faye to help me or Maddie get, helps me. It, it doesn't take much. Just somebody to get help me lean forward into my balance and then I can get on my feet. But uh, so Maddie's helped me up a couple times, but by myself, I couldn't, I couldn't get to my feet. You know, I was, I, and here's the thing, I probably could have, but they're telling me you don't want to take a fall right now because the bones are brittle. I've been doing as much as I can, probably walking around, but you're right, I haven't been doing, doing a whole heck of a lot. Uh, you know, like the other, uh, two, I had two days in a row where I slept the entire day. I couldn't, I just couldn't, keep, I couldn't stay awake. It was uh, the second day after the chemo. I woke up in the morning. My wife's been making me these, the most fantastic breakfast you ever had. You know, they want me to eat a certain diet uh, to keep this K stuff up. And uh, so I've been eating that. And she's been making me these wonderful breakfasts. And I fell asleep and I woke up when the kids came home from school. I, don't, I mean, just like that from from 8.30 in the morning until 4.30, just like that, poof, out. And uh, then the next day, same thing happened. I just, could, I just couldn't stay awake. So apparently I needed it. But now, you know, trying to get to my feet, just walk into the bathroom, I can make it. It's just, it's just slow. <laughs> it's just, it, you know, I'm, my mother at 95 got along better than I do. You know, it's just really crazy. Yeah, Paulie, that's it, it definitely, definitely got to get my sea legs under me again. I'm doing as much walking around, you know, the apartment and out in the hallway and stuff like that. When the eclipse was on, we went outside. Uh, but I was pretty weak that day also. You know, I... I uh, didn't want to stand there, so I had Maddie push me out in the wheelchair, and I didn't do much walking around out there, but it was a beautiful day. When I was at the uh, VA yesterday, I was sitting out in the sunshine. Uh, I, it only took 15 minutes for my blood work, and then it took an hour and a half for the uh, van to come get me uh, because they didn't have a van available. So I just went out in the sunshine and opened up my shirt uh, because it was warm. I mean, I was cold. But a lot of people were in T-shirts, and I just soaked up some sun for about an hour and a half, and it felt great. So what do we got here? Yeah, I, I would like to move Athena to Alabama, but it, we're going to do one more lease here, I think. Uh, Brian, uh, I, I'm wondering about if it's working or not. I'm so weak right now. But, yeah, we're, we're uh, from what I'm understanding, they're going to do this. Uh, I got four more of those uh, chemos, but they want to they wanna keep you in tow for a whole year if it, you know, if it works. And uh, from talking to these, talking to some of the people down there, I, supposedly this is working, you know, supposedly. But uh, this weakness of me, you know, this isn't any kind of a life for me to, you know, barely be able to walk across the room. This is a joke. And with these hands hurting, you know, my dang, my hands are just shot all the time. I have no power in them at all. Uh, they're like they're numb. And it's because one of them little uh, fungus that's grown on the bone is hitting the nerve. Now, they, my kidneys were having trouble, and then they had this uh, medicine that it helped it, but it's hard on the kidney. So I said, no, 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 no. I, uh, so we'll just wait on that. But... Uh, I hope everybody's doing pretty good. Yeah, Athena, we, we went ahead and uh, I didn't want to go up on the like any of the balconies and stuff. And a two-bedroom, two-bathroom opened up on the first floor. 
at, at the end of this month, the people are moving out. It's a complete remodel, new cabinets, new fridge, new stove, you know, new floors, new walls, everything, new bathroom. Uh, the, the lady took me on a tour of the one next to it. Uh, and it's, it's the exact same one my brother and I had when we were living together. We had a two bedroom uh, bath and a half directly up above it on the seventh floor. We were in 734 and this is 134. So uh, it's really nice place uh, and it's 200 bucks more. But right now, when, when I have to go to the bathroom sometimes, I have to go and it's like, I have to go now. And if my daughter's in there taking a Hollywood bath, you know, she gets in there and then she started this crap the day of lock of the door. And her, you know, it's not like her brothers go in there on her or anything. I said, no, you don't lock the door. If she slipped and fell, you know, we got to bust the door to get in because there's no little hole thing in these doors. You know, most of them, they have that little pin that you push in the hole and it unlocks it. This one don't have that. So if we, when we do move, I'm going to make sure the bathroom has something like that. Either that or I'm going to disable it so she can't lock it. So, hey, Dennis, how you doing, buddy? You, you found us this time. Yeah, Athena, I think she's going to, the summertime, she's going to like it a lot. I mean, there's some stuff we can do. Uh, we actually, uh, we got this uh, social worker when I was getting my chemo last time, and she said, uh, because of my income and the dependents, I'm eligible for a lot of, uh, a lot of help. Uh, and I was like, okay, like the, like the medical insurance for the kids, okay? They, they had denied me that before. And she says, no, 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 no. And I said, they said, I don't know why, you know, they, they didn't look into it right, but, but uh, so there's, there's help. In the state of Ohio, there's help for people. And she said, one of the things that they, they do is, she said, uh, when they get car donations, she said, they just, they just give a van away uh, a month or so ago. Somebody donated it, and she said uh, they helped them out with uh, getting insurance and getting it registered and all that kind of stuff, church people. And she said she's going to keep an eye out for something for us. I said, it doesn't matter, you know, what it is. We just need something to do grocery, grocery stores and stuff. Because right now when we shop, we're kind of locked into either the Giant Eagle, which is a mile away, or we have to rely on somebody for a ride, or we got to go across the street to Mark's. When there's so many stores where you can get bargains, I get sale papers all the time. And when Maddie and I had the motorcycle go and I had the basket on the back, we'd run up to Aldi's and get certain stuff because it was on sale. They had avocados uh, five for a dollar one time uh, down at Aldi's, so I grabbed I grabbed a bunch of them and we eat them. You know, and here right now you want an avocado across the street there, a dollar a piece. You know, so I like to I like to hit each store that has the sales, and uh, I hope that I can get back to where I'm riding the bike again. Different people said, "Oh, you just need to get rid of that." Blah blah blah. Well, I don't know. I've had a bike since I was a little kid. Started out with mini bike when I was seven, six or seven, dirt bikes. Uh, I've ridden my entire life, and uh, to take something like that away from me, I, I just. What's the point? What's the point of being around? I love to ride, and the kids love to ride. Maddie and I had a blast. Faye likes to go riding with me. You know, we we got to be careful around here. Uh, you know, I, I got the kids and all that stuff. But you know, for making store trips and stuff, I like it. Uh, it's not like I'm a, you know, I'm not some kind of suicidal crazy rider. You know, I'm not. I've always been an adult rider on the bikes. So, hey, Sean, there you are. I didn't know I was going to do a live stream either, Sean. I just decided to pop it up and see if anybody uh, pops on there. And I see quite a few of you. Glad to see glad to see you all here. Dennis, I didn't get to see you last time. You didn't see it till it was old. And, you know, watching some of them were pretty long. But uh, we, had a, we had a pretty nice day today. It wasn't too cold. Kids are doing really good in school. Maddie got his, uh, when his birthday was the last month on the 19th, uh, we ordered him a little car, a drift car, and uh, it was on back order. It just, it actually just came today. And this little electric car, you, I've never seen one that goes from zero to its stops, top speed faster 
than this little car. It's unbelievable the power this little thing's got. Plus, he wrote it down the hallway from one end of the hall all the way down to the lobby, and he still can control it. And, I mean, it covers the ground. Uh, he come, It comes shooting past the... There we are. Our Wi-Fi, guys. It's all day this has been doing this. It's We've had to go and plug the unit five or six times today. It just had to go and plug the unit five or six times today. It just keeps cutting off. We got we got a really crappy service uh, certain times and times. You know, sometimes it'll go for a week straight where we have zero problems. You know, sometimes it'll go for a week straight where we have zero problems. And then all of a sudden we get this crap where it's just all day it's shutting off. So, hey, Douglas, how you doing, buddy? Yeah, we got our buddy Sean. He's going to probably be coming out and visiting us here not too long from now, whenever they get him and his sweetie get ready. Yeah, something, too, that uh, my wife's been noticing and a couple other people noticed, too, since I've been taking this uh, chemo, it's turning my hair black, guys. Do you see that? Look what's happening to my hair. My hair before, remember, it was all white? Well, my beard is still white. But my hair was all white. Now look at it. I don't know. I don't. It has to be the chemo. I don't know what else would be turning it dark. I never did, never was one to dye my hair. You know, I'm not, I just, you know, if it falls out, it falls out. If it turns white, it turns white. That's just the way I always felt about it. But uh, it's turning dark. Pretty weird, huh? Well, Athena, I, I, I took what we got. Uh, you know, this is, this is what they offer through the, through the cable. And I'm not going to go pay $150 for the AT&T one that's got all the fancy schmancy. And the girl down the, down the hallway that works on the computer, she says her AT&T goes out all the time too. So she's paying 159 or 161 I think she said, a month. Uh, mine, I'm paying 17 They say you, you get what you pay for, but... I can't see paying 150 some dollars and it's not a whole lot better than this. And I don't need the fast speeds. You know, I got, I, I do, when I, when we do leave here though, uh, my phone that's connected up through the, through the cable TV, if I leave, I have a phone number through that. I can leave here and it still works. Whether my Wi-Fi is working or not, it still works and I, that's never going out. Now, you only get so many gigabytes per month, but I don't use it. You know, I turn I turn it off. I just stick on Wi-Fi. I turn the data off when I'm when I'm using it at home. And this phone, you have to turn it off. If it automatically uh, goes to data, if you're using the phone automatically, so you have to go into the little pull down, shut the data off, and just use Wi-Fi when I'm at home. Otherwise, I'll get a warning saying that okay, like right now I'm on slow speed until the 14th when my bills do again and uh, I, I forget how many 50 gigabytes per month something like that but we got to share that but I did go out and got uh, instead of sharing it I got Faye a Metro PCS uh, we got her a Motorola phone she didn't have a phone here she was just using her one from the Philippines on the Wi-Fi and no way to get a hold of her so we stopped at Metro P PCS. I got our $40 a month uh, calling plan with a nice Motorola phone. She likes the phone and uh, works really good. So she's, she's all set. The only thing bad about the Motorola phones, you can't find any cases for them. So I hope she takes care of it. So, but uh, that's, that was just a deal we got. They, got. they got cheaper deals than that, but there's another phone company where it was it was twenty dollars or something like that, but the uh, the neighbor said that it cuts out all the time. And she, if she needs a phone, she needs a phone. So, but she's got a, a local number, and now our doorbell works. See, I had my phone has a a different area code. So if somebody comes to the front door, you're supposed to put your phone number in the doorbell so that it rings your phone, but only if it's a local number. So we never had a doorbell. If somebody comes, they have to call me, and then we got to go to the door. Well, with Faze, it's a local number, so it'll it'll ring on her. The doorbell will ring on her phone. That way, we could, and we could buzz it in from the phone. 
I already got her set up for the laundromat. Uh, we turned that on and I put money in her laundromat uh, fund. We're starting to get a bunch of the stuff turned on so that I don't have to do it. I, Athena, I don't know anything about that free Wi-Fi. I've heard of that crap. Uh, people tell me about all this stuff. It's just like on there where they say, oh, you can get $6,400 and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I, I wonder. I don't know anything about the free Wi-Fi. I really don't. And if, you know, I got, I got what I got because we have the cable TV too, and I'm really happy with the cable TV. We got the freebie channel. We can watch movies. And so that's, this is just where I'm at. I don't know anything about the free stuff, so. But it is, uh, it's a nice evening. Kids are still up. I, I have the hardest time getting these kids to bed. They were off for an entire week and they were goofing around in their rooms till one, two in the morning. And now, you know, they're, they're harder than heck to get up in the morning because they won't go to sleep now. Hey, you guys. I still hear them in there goofing around. And that's not good. When, when they get, uh, when we move, they'll be separated in different bedrooms so that they, so that they quit doing that shit because they'll play till 2 in the morning. And then in the morning, they're moping around. They don't want to eat. They don't want to get uh, ready for school. And uh, I ain't going for it. This morning, I, I, I got pretty ticked off at the whole, the whole damn deal of these guys not wanting to get up off their ass and get moving. You know, I don't, I don't remember when I was a little kid, when it was bedtime, you went to bed, and I don't remember ever, you weren't allowed to play in your room. And I go in there and tell them, and it's just like they're deaf. It's like their brains just quit working. I don't get that, but uh, that's the way she goes. But at least they're, at least they're giving me rides. My next uh, chemo is Monday. Supposed to, it was supposed to be tomorrow, but they backed it up until Monday because what's happening Thursdays was getting so packed uh, with people. I was, uh, this last one I was, before they could give it to me, I was an hour and a half late because there was just so dang many people in there that was scheduled for a Thursday. So the doctor came in and said, hey, can I move you to a Monday? He says, we've got hardly anybody on Monday. He says, you'll be able to walk in get your stuff and be out of here within a half an hour. And I said, that sounds okay to me. You know, do, do what you think's right. And that'll give me a few extra days off uh, to see if I can get on my feet. My, my legs, this last uh, day or two, my feet aren't as swollen as they were. They did give me compression socks that I wore, but it gave me like these sores on my ankles. So I got rid of the compression socks, but the swelling's considerably uh, down so hey Todd how you doing buddy yeah, it's good to see a lot, of, a lot of you guys on there let me go back here um, don't mind me I'm trying to read this yeah we got we're gonna hopefully we'll get a uh, car real soon uh, you know we can take the kids down to the zoo uh, they got a lot of these museums around here that we could take them to uh, now they got class field trips too if they if they do any of those for the kids the field trips where they take them to the historical museums and all that I'm definitely gonna let them go uh, I want them to uh, I want them to go do as much of that I remember when I was a kid doing that kind of stuff and uh, I dug it I loved going to those museums. And all through the years when I lived here, you know, it's a lot of fun to do that. Especially uh, uh, one thing, too, I have to say about Cleveland. I've been to a bunch of different zoos in, uh, in, a, in different cities. And I'm going to tell you what, the Cleveland Zoo, you've got to be a pretty damn good zoo to do better than them. It's, a, it's really something else. Hey, thank you. President Trump, number 47 MAGA, yay. <laughs> Rick Shaw, well, I do hope I get well soon also. That is for sure. Yeah, we got the big, uh, the big vote coming up. I, I watch the news, and every time they go after him for something, his polling numbers go through the roof. 
<laughs> you know, they get them for this and get them for that. And it's so stupid. You know, when you're when you're selling something, you know, this this the case I was I actually was looking at this and I listened to a commentary. Uh, it was actually a liberal guy, a bald-headed liberal guy, and they were talking about this case. And even this liberal guy said, you know, that's what, that's what you do. You, you try to overvalue it so you can borrow as much money as you can. And uh, I, I don't, you know, these people, there has to be some kind of something going on in their brain to, you know, and they talk about all these indictments and all this stuff with this uh, former president. And the more they go after him, the higher his poll numbers get. I mean, they're going to put him in office is what they're going to do. He's going to become a martyr. And they're going to they're going to just shoo him right into office. I hope they don't try to, you know, end him. That's for sure. I'd hate to see that for anybody. But uh, I don't know. Give the guy give the guy a chance again. The last time he was in, I didn't think things were so bad. I really did. But they're they're saying, oh, you know, it's, uh, he's just another Hitler and all this. I I don't know. What are they? Actually, what are these people that say that seeing? I really don't know. I, I don't. I I didn't see any of that stuff. I think I thought things were going pretty good, you know. But there, there's, uh, you know, everybody's got their opinion, and now I got, you know, I don't have the uh, regular news channels, but I can watch stuff on the phone, and I got different news feeds that I watch. I like to watch the Indian channels; they give you a little bit better news. Australian channels, they give you they give you better news than the U.S. channels, and then they got these uh, late night guys on there these these people are messed up in their heads you know they it's you know uh, like one they had an interview with the one lady on there and they were talking about uh, Trump and all this stuff and they started citing things from a movie and the guy even said well that's not real life that's that's from a movie yeah but that's what that's what he does he does the same thing and it's you know some some of these people you just I listen to a lot of these these channels now, and you start looking at these these people talking, and it's like very very strange. So, yeah, yeah, I I do believe uh, I do believe he's going to get in. I don't I don't think I don't think anyone else has a chance unless uh, right before the election they allow all the illegals to vote. You know. I could see something like that happening, or you know, they tried to they tried to pull some crap where they said he was the insurrectionist that, you know, like like that January sixth thing. I watched that whole thing. You're not going to tell me what I saw. The news media is not going to tell me what I saw. I saw people opening up doors, waving their hands out to walk them through. Come on. And then they put words in in the president's mouth saying he said this, that, and the other. Come on. No, he didn't. I watched the whole thing. So, you know, they, they're trying to write history. No, I don't think I've ever been there, J.D. I haven't, I haven't been there. There's lots of, there's all kinds of places that, uh, you know, I'm gonna start taking the kids. My big trip, if if we do get a buggy this uh, this summer, my big trip, I want to take the kids on after we move. I want to I want to buy brand new uh, couches, you know, like bed couches. I'd like to get two of those when we move. And then at once that's all done, I actually paid every month for the last couple of months. I've been paying ahead on the rent. I'm giving them an extra five hundred so that when we move, that boom, I can just take that that month's rent, buy the two couches I want pay for the move and then after that I can start saving. I'd like to go to uh, uh, Niagara Falls this summer, take the kids there. Uh, you know, that's just something that I'd like them, like them to see. Uh, I'd like to pay to see that. And uh, it'd be a nice trip. And we don't really have to uh, have a car. We just need a car to get to a bus because there's charter services. The last time we went, I took a bus. I think we went to Johnstown or somewhere. It was Latrobe, I can't remember where we went. We jumped on the bus. And we had two days, and we had a blast. Okay, Brantley. Ah, uh, the Ghost Rider movie. <laughs> hey, man, I tell you what, I lost a whole bunch of weight.
Yeah. Yeah, the lake's, the lake's pretty nice. You know, take them down to Edgewater Park or something. I'd like to take them to Lakewood Park. You know, and then there'll be a 4th of July thing. I don't like to go too close to fireworks, so I like to be kind of off from the fireworks. Yeah, I'm not going to do Renison. I just rather pay cash for it and be done with it. I don't like doing I don't like doing payments on anything. Right now, I basically got rent. I'm not doing payments on anything, and I don't I just don't like the idea of half nav. Something that I have to oh look I was in the hospital. What if I wouldn't have been able to make payments on my stuff? You know that would have been that wouldn't have been too good. <clears throat> and me being gone for so long, it, when you don't use credit. <clears throat> Your credit's horrible. I mean, it's absolutely horrible. Now, when I did come back through my bank, I got a credit card that was good for a thousand bucks, and I did use it. But <coughs> I put my automatic payments on, on it, and then when the first of the month comes by, I just pay it off every month. So that thing goes every month. You know, I got my uh, uh, cable TVs on automatic. And what was the other one? I got uh, electric bill. Electric bill's on automatic. And we don't have any other bills. There's no water bill here. Either. Uh, we don't pay for heat. It's electric heat, but we don't pay for that. But since Faye's been here, I, I was usually running the electric bill. A big one we had was 29 bucks, And <laughs> I got the bill this month. And it's an actual 61 bucks because I don't use the stove. Uh, you know, that thing uses a lot of electricity, those griddles in there. I use a little flat plate, like to cook eggs and pancakes and all that. It's a thousand water. And, you know, $29 bill. Now I'm getting 60 some dollar electric bill, and that's ridiculous. And, all, you know, all these damn lights on. You know, I come in the house during the middle of the day and all the lights are on. You know, that's, uh, you know, no, I have zero control over it, and that's a shame. I actually seen some of that uh, Renaissance Center stuff. Some of it is pretty crappy, though. I had a, a buddy Tom that uh, he's over by he's over in Strongsville. I can't remember the name of the place, uh, but that's what he did. He called them up and he he did the whole place. I mean, the entire place on the Renaissance Center. And it, it's more than because he got bedroom set and all this stuff. I think he's paying about one hundred and fifty. And then when they're then when he's all done paying for it. You keep it, and uh, but it, I don't know. It looked, it seemed really cheesy, crappy, more like IKEA garbage. You know, like some of that IKEA stuff that you see. You know, it's supposed to be retro, modern. I don't know. I call it cheap. You know, more more than likely, some of that stuff you see out in the trash, not in somebody's living room. Everything in this place is LED light bulbs, Dennis. I changed them as soon as I got here. And some of them, like that double light in there, I, I unscrewed one of the bulbs. We don't need that much light. The dining room's got three bulbs in it, but I'm not going to unscrew those ones. But, uh, yeah, everything in here is LED. It's the stove. I don't. I did, never used the stove when I was here. You know, if I was uh, making spaghetti, I used the stove or a, a pot roast or something like that or the oven. But my general cooking was that flat plate on the countertop. And uh, we cook we pretty much cook everything in that steaks everything because it doesn't use the electricity. Where that big stove, I think that's got to be what a thousand watts. One of them burners. I mean, holy cow! Let's see. Well, it's not that there's more cooking going on. It's 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 using the high. Uh, why is my brain not working? The high draw item, you know, like I say, I cooked here. Maddie and I were always cooking something good, but uh, we weren't using the stove. You know, that dang thing, when you turn that on, the lights go dim. You know, same same like when I did the self-cleaning. Holy cow, I, I did self-cleaning on that month, and my, my bill was up like 12 bucks when I did self-cleaning because that, that thing took like four hours. Sure did do a nice job on the inside of the stove, though. We just went in there with the vacuum cleaner, sucked up the dust. It was like brand new in there. 
but uh, that's a good way to clean your cast iron too. Throw <laughs> if if you got a real bad you know bad cast iron that's all pitted and rusted and all that, throw it in your self cleaning oven, and then just retreat it when you get it out, and that'll that'll fix it up pretty good. We love our cast iron. I have that. Uh, we're gonna do a chicken here. And I have the Dutch oven. If ever you're looking for them, I always like the Lodge. And I have the lid that has the little tits on the inside. And a lot of people say, well, that don't mean nothing. Well, yeah, it does. Because if you put a chicken in there and you've got a regular dome lid, all that moisture goes to the outside of the lid and just circulates. Whereas if you've got those little tits up on the, the roof, you might the lid is the roof, it's raining on the chicken. So you don't do anything to it. You just leave that lid on. And you cook it, and as soon as you smell it, it's done. And when you open up the lid, it's perfectly browned. It's really nice. Yeah, I, I know everybody in the Philippines, when the rice goes up five pesos, they freak. You know, they just go, they, they you know, it, it's a shame. But, uh, you know, this, the whole world is doing that. The entire world, everything went up. I look, I can't believe how much we spend here. You know, what, what we pay for everything. It's just the way it is. Now, if we get the, our buddy comes back in, I'll bet, I'm betting it's going to change. And I'll tell you what, things are going to get a lot better just by uh, emptying a lot of these people that shouldn't be here. You know, when those people go, that's really going to be something. Yes, yeah, so pretty much Dennis self-basting. But uh, it just kind of rains on the food. I did a, I did a uh, chicken before. I stuffed it. I put, a, I put an onion in it, and then we had some stuffing, some bread, and raisins, apples. And uh, Maddie and I stuffed that. Made it like a little miniature turkey. Uh, my brother got us this chicken. He he's, um, goes to the special market where the guy raises these chickens, and he brought us a chicken. So I told my I told my boy, let's we're not going to cut this one up and fry it. We're going to go ahead and roast this instead of frying it in the ghee. And uh, we roasted that one. And I'll tell you what, I don't know what they fed that chicken, but uh, I'd like to find out what store that is so we can buy our chicken there again. I don't care even if it costs double what the regular chicken, because it was tender, it was juicy, and uh, Maddie and I sucked that whole that whole chicken, and it was a pretty good sized one. I mean, it just fit in my Dutch oven, uh, long wise. So, you know, that was a that was a pretty damn, pretty damn tasty bird. But yeah, I don't miss the, uh, I don't miss the Philippines at all. Faye does a little bit, but I think she's going to get used to it here. It's not bad here. It's, uh, you know, we're in a, we're in a pretty good area. Uh, the schools are the schools are pretty good. Uh, you know, there's, the crime is low. Uh, you know, it's a college town, and uh, you don't hear too much trouble. You got some of the young guys, they got their speedy race cars and stuff. It ain't young guys, actually. You know, <laughs> I, I think in young guys. They were young guys 40 years ago, but you got these guys that are racing their hot rods and stuff still, and a lot of crazy motorcycle guys. So that's why when we're out on the main drag, you really got to watch the, watch the kids because... I've seen some bikes come through here at 90, 100 miles an hour. You know, and that's really uncalled for in this type of uh, setting. And once you get past our place, past the bridge, it opens up and you can you can go fast. It's like uh, just nothing but big driveways. But here you got a bunch of businesses where there's lights and stopping and all that. And it starts to get into the college, you know. And so you can't be doing 100 miles an hour in here. Now, me, I rode my bike up and down this road different times, and you, know, you get guys pull up beside me and start doing wheelies and stuff like that. We had, we watched a guy wipe out here one day. He got way up in front of us and pulled a wheelie, and somebody somebody deliberately cut their wheel over like in front of him like that, and he came down real hard, and down he went. Uh, we drove past him. He was just getting himself up. It's like, who cares? Anybody can pull a wheelie. Anybody. So... What's the point? You do it one time, you're done. But no, they got to they got to do their big show, and the, and the cops see you. You're, it's a ticket. I I don't know why they're you know. And there's cops. You can't seem to go around this area here, where if you look real close, you're going to see a cop somewhere. 
he's sitting behind some bushes or he's behind the dentist's office or he's, he's parked behind the marks and he's watching the whole section and he ain't coming out. He'll call his buddy on the radio and he'll sit there and pop a bunch of people for speeding. So you don't, you don't play in this little area and I, and I don't mind that they're doing that. I really don't. But yeah, we gotta, we're gonna be moving here. Um, the apartment, we, did, we had to do an application again, which is to me is silly because we live here. And uh, so we did the application and at the end of April, these people are moving out of the apartment. And of course they put new carpet in, they're gonna paint it. Uh, it's a remodel. It's the, the first people who lived in it for the remodel and they're leaving early. So we're gonna we're gonna get it, and it should be an easy move. I think we can just get a like a cart or something, and put everything on a cart. This couch is gonna go out to the dumpster, but uh, you know this bed. I can I can put stuff on this this uh, bed here, and we can wheel it over there. You know, just drag the mattress over, and we can put a bunch of stuff on this bed. It's got nice casters. This this little table I got here, we can put stuff on that. And we can wheel a bunch of stuff over. We're going to see if we can get uh, our buddy Gilbert to help us. He's got some nice moving uh, wheelie things. Pay him to come give us a hand. And I want to get my safe built. Uh, I bought a really nice safe, uh, but it came in a flat box, so it has to be assembled. Um, and I, it's just too heavy. Uh, I couldn't even move it out of the bedroom. I don't have the strength right now, so I'm going to see if I can get Gilbert to build that and get the guns all locked up. You know, I just got the hand locks on them now. And there's no bullets for, uh, you know, the, the AR. I don't have any ammunition for that anyway, so. But uh, the, the pistol, we keep that up, locked. And I do. I take it everywhere I go. That's like your, your MasterCard. You know, I had, I had one of them guys that was doing a thing. Yeah, first thing you got to the United States was bought a gun. Yep. That was one of the first things I did. Absolutely. And I carry it everywhere I go. It's just like a MasterCard. I don't leave home without it. And I've never, uh, you know, having it. Uh, me, I'm still going to go the other way. If somebody's causing trouble, I'm still going to go the other way. But uh, I did have it a couple times, uh, like when we were attacked by the dog uh, years ago. Uh, and, I, and I had it. And uh, that was a non, you know, when the police came, they said, hey, you should have had control of your dog. You know, and I, I waited. I mean, the thing was the thing was covering about 100 yards distance and it wouldn't stop. And uh, when it was like right in front of me, you know, it actually, after I hit it, it, it slid and hit me right in the leg. You know, a shepherd and a beautiful, beautiful dog. I mean, absolutely gorgeous dog. I just hated to, I hated to do that, but uh, that thing was gonna chew me up. That was his, his mean guard dog. And then uh, that fellow, he, you know, he just wanted all kinds of trouble when the police come there. You know, police show up, and I waited for him. And I told him, well, there, that's what happened. And uh, the cops said, just, just go home. And they took my information and all that stuff, and and I never heard from him again. Uh, some somebody did. I, I can't say that somebody did call me a little while later from there and ask if he was if the neighbor was causing any trouble. I said, no, he moved. Bunch of the bunch of the neighbors, were, you know, got pissed at him, and he moved on. Yeah, <laughs> FJB. <laughs> yeah, my sweetie and I are still up. Moo Moo, he got to he got to bed a little early, eight thirty. He was sound asleep, so hopefully tomorrow morning, seven o'clock, I'm gonna start waking him up. I'm gonna get, just get up no matter how bad it is tomorrow and try to do a, a morning walk. I've got uh, Monday coming up, I've got chemo again and it's I have to leave here at 7.30 to go all the way down to uh, Cleveland. So I'll have to be up nice and early for that one. Yeah, this, this uh, hospital bed, I just love it. I'm so happy that they gave me this thing. The main thing is when I'm sitting like, they gave me the wheelchair, I can't get out of it by myself. I can't get off that couch. If I sit on the toilet without that extender on it, I can't get up. But what's nice about the bed 
you can push the button and the bed raises up like you know like the nurses do when they make your bed they raise it all the way up so they don't got to bend over well then all i got to do is throw my feet over the side and i'm almost standing up already so and plus it's got a really nice mattress on it it's wrapped in like a big plastic but the mattress is uh really comfortable and it's not hot you know sometimes the one at the hospital when you were laying on that mattress it had some kind of a foam thing and uh it was hot you know you you'd be cold on the air the air up above you was cold but your back would be hot and then when you would roll over it was sweaty so you then you got a chill so i had to have the heat up real good you know without a cover in order to to manage that well this thing this thing you don't heat up it's uh and it's it's a nice bed it's a real nice bed and I'm glad they gave it to me, that and that little walker thing. I mean, I used the heck out of all this stuff. They were going to give me a, a electric wheel buggy. And I was like, no, because supposedly I'm going to get better. You know, so I don't need that. Yeah, they were calling for, I, I saw that on the weather today. They called for rainy weather today, too. It never happened. Yesterday, when I was at the Parma, they said, oh, it was going to rain all afternoon. Never happened. Maybe over the lake or something, but we had a couple beautiful days. The day of the eclipse was really nice. You didn't, need, you didn't really need a jacket to go outside. And uh, when, I went to, when I went to Parma, uh, when I was sitting out in the sun, it, it was just a beautiful day. I just went outside the door. I had to wait an hour and a half for the van ride. So I just sat in the sun, soaked it up, unbuttoned my shirt, pulled it up, and uh, got some heat on my hands. You know, my hands hurt bad, but while they were in the sun, the, the pain went away. It's really weird. It's like in the hospital whenever, like I got uh, these things. I put my hand, these little things. This thing's hotter than heck right now. I had to, I had to wait till it cooled down a little bit. But if I can if I can put my hands by one of these close, they stop hurting so bad. It's just they're freezing, you know. If I, now when I touch when I touch somebody, they say, "No, your hands feel warm," but to me they feel cold. It's, it's just weird. A thousand pins and needles. But these things, I can't believe how long these last. This lasted all the way through the night. This is uh, hot hands. My my little Maddie, he gave me a he gave me a little dolly to sleep with. Check that out, Maddie got. <laughs> and look, Darth Vader's got a baby. My Maddie gave me that, so that I wouldn't I wouldn't be out here all by myself. <laughs> He's funny. And the little baby, I don't know where they got this one. But that's kind of cute, little baby doll. The it was so cute when my daughter was when my daughter was here. Uh, like Dorothy loves dolls. We we went to the store. She always likes to pick out a nice doll. And her little, uh, I guess it would be her niece, my granddaughter. They're the same age. Uh, they're only a few few months difference. And when it, we were at the store. I told her she could pick out something. And she went out and picked out this doll. And I said, the little, the little girls, when they're that age and they're, they're still picking out dolls, they're gonna be, they're gonna be just fine. You know, they're not, they're not too advanced because a lot of these kids, they wanna start, at that age, they wanna start putting makeup on and going out with their friends and all that. And like my little daughter, it ain't happening. You can forget that. You know, that's just, just that's my baby. And that's like these kids that want to do all these sleepovers and stuff like that. Nope. That child is my responsibility. They'll sleep over at my house. You're not going to somebody else's house where I have no control. You know, it's just, it's just not going to happen. You, you don't let your kids get away like that. Because who knows what they're, what they're doing with them. Or what's being said or anything. You, you know, it's not right. They're sleeping? Don't show me. Don't show you? What are you talking about? Don't put the camera here. Why would I do that? Why did you why are you starting like that?
hate that when I get uh, barked at. Like I would do something like that. It's like the, it's like I watch all these cop shows where these cops are giving, constantly giving people directives. <laughs> I watch these guys. I'm like, if you watch some of these uh, cop things, it's it's a wonder that people can even stand the police. I watched the one guy. Uh, he just beat the crap out of this young black girl. He went in there about her dog, and uh, it was all done. She's like, okay. And then he just goes in the house and then drags her outside and whoops her ass. I mean, these, these guys are just out of control. They don't, they don't have the power to do that stuff. And I, I don't, I don't, uh, I didn't like the thing about Trump where he said he wants to give them carte blanche to where they can't be sued over anything. They have qualified immunity now, which they can lose for certain things. Now he wants to give them to where they, they can't lose it and they could do whatever they want. That's like Gestapo police. You know, that's just, that's not right. They need to take that away, just like anyone else. If I, if I go up and do something to somebody, I'm going to have to pay. And these guys need to do the same thing. Yeah. Well, I hope you have a nice day. I'm going to try to get outside tomorrow. I got my little, uh, this little walking thing. What is that called, a K-22? Can you see that? Down on, does that say K-22? Down here. Down on this red thing. F-22. F-22. It's called an F-22. Like a fighter jet. <laughs> there were so many of those guys down at the VA that got them. Uh, and they got different height ones. Three different heights. I thought there was only two. They got three different heights. I got the tallest one. I wish it would go a little bit higher. If this thing was up about three or four more inches, I'd be able to get out of it. But twice I sat down at the VA and I couldn't get out of it. And it was really funny. Uh, both times some old, old guy came up and helped me out. You're here, I'm 63, and some 89-year-old guy helped me out. <laughs> but I remember my mother when she was uh, getting older and she was looking for something to do. She was taking care of a little old lady up the street that was actually actually younger than her. But she stayed in pretty good shape up and through her 90s, whereas uh, this lady was probably late 60s and was in about like shape like me, couldn't hardly get around. Yeah, it was a shame. But I know I got to get up off my my butt and get moving as much as I can. It's just, uh, it, it's tough when you just don't have the power. It's Energizer Bunny with no batteries. I don't know why this is happening. I don't, I'm, I wonder, I'm going to ask the doctor, what, is this chemo working or what? Hey, Freddie. Back, back to blue, clo clo close to borders. I don't, I don't know what the heck that means. I have no, no idea. Back to blue, close to borders. Hmm. Yeah, well, yeah, I've been watching, uh, I got to do a urine thing coming up. I got my cranberry juice, so. <clears throat> yeah, they got me on some kind of, um, some kind of medicine because I was overloading on potassium. So they got me on a no potassium diet and then they got me this stuff that I have to drink once a day that keeps the potassium out of my system. It, th it, it binds to it and throws it off because they said if I if the potassium gets too high, I can have a heart attack. It's boom, Widowmaker, dead. So they've been monitoring that real close. The, as far as I know, the kidneys are doing really good. The last, they took nine vials of blood the last time they checked everything. Uh, I know the, the calcium's good because I'm not getting the twitching once every now and again. So that, that's doing good. They didn't say anything about the kidneys. They just said about the, you know, they got me on this stupid warfarin Coumadin, which really sucks. But uh, that's the way it goes. Back the blue policeman. Well, 
I don't, uh, never had much use for them. Yes, we have no bananas. We have no bananas today. Yes, I like that. I like that song. Yeah, I, I've never had a use for them. But I remember the, when I was very young, I was uh, the first time I ever ran into cops. I, I was on my own. I got up, was out of the military, and uh, I got this uh, black leather jacket. It was like a, a World War II German jacket. And it was a long one. It went all the way pa down past my knees. And it was ha this thing was heavy. It was a really nice jacket. And I took it up to a leather place and had them uh, clean it and fix it up. I had a couple hundred bucks into this thing. And then I had a, uh, I had a real nice uh, matching hat. And I was walking down the street. And uh, just walking down the street. You know, I had, a, I had an old car. But, you know, I, I used to not use it all the time. And I was going up to this little diner to get something to eat, and these cops just pulled over, and that man, you talk about harassing the hell out of me. Threw me in the car, had me in cuffs. You know, what are you doing here? And uh, I live here. You know, and it just just gave me nothing but a hassle. And then they, then they said, we're watching you. It got so bad, they kept stopping me every time I walked outside that I, had, I just had to get out of the neighborhood. I actually had to just get the hell out because they were just harassing the piss out of me, and I didn't do anything. I was no, I wasn't doing anything wrong in the area. You know, I was just going to work every day, just like everybody else. Smith and Wesson. We got, we got our own. I, I don't, I don't ever call the cops on anybody. That's a good way to get yourself killed anymore. You know, they look at, look at all the times you'll call. They go to save some. Look at that little girl on the freeway. The hostage situation. Her dad had her, and what they do? The police murdered her. They killed her. They went there to save her, and of course they they shot her. And it was all police bullets in her. So you know, they're they're not they're not there to save you. And did any of them get in trouble? Of course not. There you go, Freddie. Me, I love my uh, Beretta 92. I just thought it was a super accurate firearm. We used to have a hunting club, and we had a we had a place down in the desert, and. Uh, there was a big bank. It was about a 20 foot high bank. And somebody had dumped a load of bricks. And they weren't, they weren't red bricks. They were like a yellow brick, bunches of them. And we had a hundred yard uh, two by four stand set up. We beat into the ground and nobody bothered it. Heck, we'd go, we'd go there and, you know, maybe somebody was there, maybe they weren't, but nobody bothered anything out there. And at a hundred yards with that nine millimeter, you could hit I could hit a brick, you know, pretty much about eight out of ten times, hit that brick. And we used to hunt jackrabbits with them. You know, we called it Bust a Cap Hunting Club. And, uh, yeah, I, I had a, I had different handguns. I had the gun shop for years, too, and I had all kinds of firearms. But uh, now I don't have that many. I did get a uh, Mike, Mike Simpson, uh, Picked me up an a AR. It's in 450 Bushmaster. I don't have any ammo for it yet, but it's got a. Uh, I put a prism prism sight on it. I got a real nice sling for it. Uh, it's got a heavy barrel. That's the only thing I don't like about it. It's real front heavy, and I've got the I got the magazines a five and a seven round magazine. Uh, I'd like to get one for uh, the the uh, 556 Wild. Yeah, I would, that would be really nice to uh, to have a separate one instead of putting it together. I like the one that looks just like the Colt, you know, just like the original Armalite with the with the handle up on top. I actually was out at the uh, police range when I was going to the, the gunsmith school, and they had one of them down there. Uh, they were they had fully autos, but they were they were asking us don't put it in auto. They said just leave it in leave it in semi, and you guys can shoot up all this ammo. And they had like five or six big boxes of ammo that we could shoot. And they had a whole bunch of magazines loaded up. One of the one of the guys had one of them loaders, and he was just filling these mags up. But nobody's wanting to shoot it. And I'm telling you what, out to 450 yards, I could not miss with this thing. 
you know, we had plates all the way out to 450, and this this thing was just fantastic. It was the one I had was a Colt, uh, the, you know, the Colt black rifle. It was the full size, and it, I liked it because I didn't have to scrunch my head down. You know, I was I want the handle. The one I have here, it just has a rail. It doesn't have that piece on the top, you know, with the aperture peep, and that's what I want. But uh, we'll, we'll get that. That'll be down the road when I start getting the kids out to shoot a little bit more. Maddie's got his 22 rifle. We got to get that out and shoot it. And uh, I'd like to have a little 22 pistol for him. And hopefully we can get out to Pennsylvania where my daughter lives and do some hunting this year. Depends on if we get a car. You know, it's it's trying to trying to get the the car. Let's see. Medical marijuana, my friend. What? How did that come up? How did, uh, I don't know how medical marijuana came up. Were you talking to somebody else there, Freddie? But yeah, I used to love to go out and shoot. We, we had a game when my, my other kids were little. I had the, the 44 mag. My wife carried that little 357. And we used to take softball. You get a softball and put it out of 50 yards. And the first person who can get the, the softball past 100 yards wins. And sometimes if you, if you hit, if you hit the softball on the bottom, it would come back towards you. It would go that way, but then it would start spinning backwards. So you'd have to hit it on the top. So you had to be pretty precise. And with the 44 Magnum, <laughs> I usually always won because I could really get it out there quick. And then we used to shoot the bowling pins, you know, knock the bowling pins off the table. That was a lot of fun. I actually did watch a guy, though. He shot a bowling pin and got it to spin on the table. Then he hit it in the top so that it would spin the other way. Then he got on the other side so it would spin the other way, and then he shot it off the table. A trick shooter guy. That was at one of the shows I went to. Yeah, I don't know how we got on that one, Freddie. A scene of people like the edibles. I know different people use that stuff, but uh, they offered it where I, was, where I was at, and they said it might help you, it might help you absorb the medicine, might help you sleep, because I couldn't sleep. And I said, it's not that I can't sleep. It said, you guys come in every hour and start poking me with needles and, and uh, taking blood pressure and waking me up. That's why I'm not sleeping. But me, I, I tried that stuff, and I just get paranoid with it. That was something that just was never my bag ever, even when I was a young guy. I know a lot of people who, who like it, but me, I have, I have absolutely zero use for it. And this last time they gave me, uh, they gave me some, uh, I forget what, what it was called, but it was like a gummy thing. And I just got this total paranoid, rotten, horrible feeling and that lasted for like about four hours. And I'm like, never, nah, that's it. I said, you could take that stuff and put it in a rubbish can. I don't want nothing to do with that. For me, it's just no good. And it didn't do a damn thing for any pain. I actually, I'm really not in it that much pain. I got sore back. You know, that's been going on for 40 years, you know, since I had the accident. But I really don't, you know, that, that's just used to it. How long we got there? Well, we've been doing about an hour already. Now you guys got anything you want to, anything you're thinking on? I'm probably not going to go too much longer. I might do a little bit of walk, a little bit of walking after. I'm not tired at all right now. I might get some more juice and walk around a little bit with my nice little hot pad. It's amazing how, I can't believe, the other day my son fired me one of these up at about 8 o'clock. 8.30 in the evening, and when I got up in the morning at about 7, it was still hot. Yeah, little, uh, little Dorothy, she sure is a gorgeous kid. There's no doubt about it. All these kids, they're just, they're really something. They're beautiful kids. I'm glad they get their looks from their mother. That's for sure. But my daughter's, uh, uh, my daughter, my first daughter she she's a good looking girl and her babies are really pretty 
the oldest one. I haven't seen her since she was two years old uh, when I was out here last time. And then uh, this time she's nine now, so I haven't seen her in seven years. And boy, she's just really got a beautiful look to her. She's built nice and she's sweet. You know, and she got her little dolly. I took her to the store and I told her, you, you know, it's a, it's a section in the store. It's got all kinds of toys, games, you name it, cars, trucks. And uh, she, she zeroed right into the dolly. And there was this one dolly that had a kind of like a real nice outfit on with a tie and all that. And she, I was looking at that going, boy, that's a really cool looking doll. And she went for it. She grabbed it. So. And I, I like that, that she, you know, she still wants to play with her dolls and stuff. And it was a certain kind. You know, I guess she's got more of them at home. I don't know what... You know, they got, they got, you know, like, like, not a Ken and Barbie, but similar to something like that. Yeah, the kids are doing good. Their English is uh, fantastic. I mean, they, they just slipped right around to that. Uh, no problem at all. But we've always done that. I've always spoken to them in English, and their mom's always spoken to them in Tagalog. We're not changing that. And they can, they can in the middle of the sentence, can switch over. You know, so you know their their brains are are working really good, and they're doing well in school. Teachers like them. They're and they're doing their all their work good. So you know we're not having any problem with them. I like that the bus picks them right out front. Dorothy's going to be going to the middle school here next year. This school only goes up to fourth grade, and then fifth grade she's going to go to the big school, the middle school. And then the following year, Maddie. But the buses, they, it just comes right out front. We decided since I've got the chemo, they said it's pretty much a, a year program, even though I only have the eight treatments. It's a, it's a year program. I'll have to go back every uh, month for testing and all this kind of stuff and scans and all this. So we decided to uh, sign a lease for one more year. And we'll... Instead of going all the way, they're just going to let us out of this one early, three months early, and then we'll start a new one for a year or so. And we'll have the two bathrooms. That's much, much needed. I mean, already we're running into trouble with the bathroom. Well, you know something? I, I A lot of these people that are, are taking it, you know, they had a whole bunch of people down at the clinic th th Thursday. I didn't see anybody's hair fell out. I saw one lady, one little old lady whose hair fell out. And her hair was like, you know, it just got like super thin. And she had a wig. So her, her friends and family all pitched in and bought her a wig. And uh, I was talking to her. And she lifted it up, showed me. She says, yeah, it's, 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 doesn't, it's not doing too good. Now, hers fell out. And she said it was coming out in big clumps, but... I didn't notice anybody. Everybody else I saw in there had a full head of hair. I didn't see anybody where their hair fell out. Now, there was, a, there was one fellow in there. He was already, uh, you know, male pattern baldness type thing. I forget what his name was. He had, a, he had it when he took his hat off. But he had his hair. And uh, that, that fellow, Al, he had, boy, he had a big old, big old mop of hair on top of his head. 72-year-old guy. Same, same cancer. Uh, everybody that was in there on Thursday had the same thing I had. This is a lot more common than people would, would think. I was actually very surprised that there were so many people who had this. You know, there must have been about 70 people ran through there. I was, I was sitting in the very first one, so I could see as people were coming in the door, as they were calling them in. And uh, in the two and a half hours I was there, about 70 people came through. Now, me, they held mine up for like an hour and a half. Uh, I think four people went through the room I was in because they put two in a room. And uh, I had four people come through. Yeah, I, I think, uh, I don't know. It's not really, my hair falls out all the time anyway. <laughs> you ought to see the tub drain. You know, but it's really weird that it's turning black. Huh, Faye? Huh? My hair is turning black. Yes, and my hair is turning white. Her hair is turning white and mine turning black. 
I guess we'll have to. I, yeah, we'll give you a dose of chemo, turn your hair black. But a bunch of people, I didn't even pay attention to it. I, I just, you know, I just get out of the shower and slick it back and I go about my day. But uh, I started looking at some older pictures and I was just pure white, you know, and now it's, now it's darkening up. It's pretty weird. But when you got gray nose hairs, that's bad. <laughs> okay. Yeah, anybody there in the Philippines right now? Where are you at, Athena? And Freddie, where are you guys at? Florida, cool. Did you drink like insure? No. Why? It's okay, my blood work was good. Huh? I didn't have any for a couple of days and my blood work was good. It was right on two point four, so I told him I'm not really take I'm not gonna take three a day anymore. Guy said, Whatever you're doing, keep doing it. They gave me this uh when I left the hospital. They had the regular uh insure. Uh, to go with my meal, they had chocolate, strawberry, and vanilla, and that stuff is pretty good. I don't mind drinking it, but they said it's got the potassium in it, so they had to knock that off, and they got me this Ensure Clear, it's called. And this stuff is miserable, guys. It is absolutely... Yeah, three bucks more. Yeah, they sent me cases of this stuff. There's 24 in a case. I got three or four cases in there. And I'm telling you what, this stuff... Oh. It is absolutely the worst. It's supposed to be like a grape or fruit fruit flavor. I don't know what the hell this crap is. But uh, it also, when you are when you drink it, I get a, every time I drink it, I get a stomachache. And they want me to take this one every meal. And uh, so they're, they're checking my blood work. Well, a few days ago, I just said, I'm, I'm not taking this crap anymore. They, they, if they really like this stuff so much, they can drink it themselves. They want to keep my K vitamin or something up in my system. Well, I quit taking it when they did the blood work. The blood work came out really good. So, you know, I just I just don't want to drink this stuff. I mean, you, I can have, she can make me this wonderful breakfast, and then I got to ruin it with this disgusting drink. Okay. Yeah, I was down in Davao City for about six months at the call center. I liked I, w I liked it down there. I thought that was pretty cool. I liked the uh, the big G Mall. I forget what's the name of that, uh, but it had it had a really good uh, grocery store down there. Any anything I wanted, it was like being in America. Whereas where we live in Lipa, you can't get you know sour cream or cottage cheese or any of that stuff. But when I was in Davao at that G Mall, anything you can buy here, you could get there. And they had the uh, beers of the world, and uh, Oh, you just name it. It, it. it was a fantastic store. Yeah, I loved it. I, I just, I absolutely 100% loved it. I was about a half hour from the airport. And I did not want to come back here. I, w I would have liked to stay down there. There was actually uh, one of the fellows that worked at the call center. His family were realtors. And they had a, a piece of ground. It was on three hectares, not, not acres, three hectares, and it was, the house was over, but it had, uh, it had running water in it. It was the last one that had city, that had the city water. The next road down, you had, it was all well water. And uh, red, red uh, unpaved road out front, and it was 650,000. And uh, I'm looking at it thinking, it, it was like Hacienda style. It had a big uh, center room, you know, where you could you could make it a dance hall if you wanted, and then it had the bedrooms sort of like out around the perimeter, and then it had a small second floor storage area. Uh, you went up a ladder, not a ladder, but some steps into one little uh, bedroom, and about half of the upstairs it had a, for storage. You could have made a loft out of it for kids or something like that, but it was basically for storage. And uh, six hundred fifty thousand, 
and it's yours. Yeah, they're getting earthquakes everywhere. I heard New Jersey just had a had an earthquake. We did like the eclipse, though. But that was the kids, the very first one. It's actually the first one that I was ever in that, that it got dark like it was nighttime. It was, I think it was about 3.15, 3.20. It was like midnight here. I mean, it really got dark for about 15 minutes. And I took a picture when it was starting. You could see the kids good, and then I waited a few minutes, took another picture, and it looked like evening, and then I took another picture. You couldn't even, you could barely see the kids. It was so dark. So, but that was pretty cool. And then we got the kids the little glasses. Yeah, when I was down there, Athena, they had a, a bombing. They, they did a stupid bombing. You know, I, I don't get these, I don't get these people. Yeah, they just had one in uh, Taiwan, I believe. They had a big 7.2 that uh, wrecked a lot of buildings and stuff. But a lot of times, if you watch the news, it's the same pictures over and over. It's not like it, it just covered the whole country. They keep showing the same stuff from different angles. You know, just to sensationalize the news. I get tired of that. They seem to do it quite often. You know, slow news day, I guess. But I feel bad for those people. A lot of buildings went down. They don't. They don't have the uh, structures that can take it. Like you look at Japan, how they build their buildings. You know, they could have all kinds of earthquakes in those buildings. Pfft, nothing. You know, they just bounce it right off. They did one uh, when we were in Carmona. They they went down. My goodness, they had to go down 40 feet. They they dug down like 40 feet. And they were pouring these big concrete uh, pylons da down there, like in tubes. And I was going over there looking because we used to go past there. And when they closed, you know, you could just walk right through. You know, they had a gate and all that stuff, but you could you could walk through. You couldn't get a vehicle through, but you could walk through. You wouldn't want to fall down there. But they they were had these monstrous springs. They were going to put the whole building on springs. They had them down in the hole, now, unless they're storing springs down there. But uh, the last time we went through, the building's up already. It's about an eight-story building. Looks like an office building. I don't know whose it is, but it was a, a Japanese firm that built it. So I guess they're, they earthquake-proofed it. Yeah. Well, it's a lot of that, that kind of stuff happens, especially around eclipses and stuff like that. You know, there's, there was a lot of channels on there, and these people who gave all crazy over an eclipse. I don't know. Pretty cool to me. That's, like I say, that's the first one that completely blocked out the sun. I've, I've been on the edges of them before, but never where it completely you know, made it like it was nighttime. And then the kids had a blast out there, running around in the grass. A lot of people were out. Grand, uh, Grandpa, I wonder who the hell calls him Grandpa. Nobody, he's an old pedophile, the old freak. Somebody just said he knows the difference between a man and a woman because he always only sniffs the little girl's hair. You never see him sniffing little boys. And then I, I don't know, half the time he gets on there, I'm surprised they even put him on there because you don't know what he's saying. The other day he gets up there and he says, yeah, and I'm with the Kibbe, they didn't have enough airports during the Revolutionary War. And I was like, what? You know, and, and I know he caught himself, but uh, it's like, yeah, I guess not. I guess they didn't have uh, enough airports during the Revolutionary War. It's a shame, too. Sleepy Joe, yeah. What a What a... I still, I do not believe that that guy, you know, they, they, that was a, a, st a big steal. That was the, the, the biggest steal there was. And if we let it happen again, then we deserve what we get. But that's just all there is to it. I can't believe they let him off the hook this time because there ain't no way. I, I watched a man fill stadiums outside, tailgate parties. And this guy, nobody. News crews, maybe 20, 30 people at his events. 
and they say you got 81 million? Give me a break. Give me a stinking break. That's a joke. And same thing with Bill Bummer. I don't think he got as many. All of a sudden, that guy popped up, and I started thinking, man, there's something up with this guy, because they started saying what a wonderful orator he was. You took the guy's teleprompter away, the guy couldn't say nothing. Married to a dude. I mean, holy cow. Did you, the la latest picture, they show a bunch of these uh, Hollyweirds, and they got Michelle up there with them, and I mean, holy cow. What a monster. You know, just so, so huge compared to them. So, and, it, you know, everybody knows it's dude. I mean, how can you not? But yet these libs will, you know, I, I, when I worked in California, there was a fellow down there, he was ultra-liberal, said he loved Nancy Pelosi and Feinstein and all them, you know, liberal dude. Uh, he got on there and he said, whoa, oh, he thinks Michelle is one of the best-looking women on the planet. And I said, wow, I didn't know you were gay. You know, <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't know that. I guess it was he, that guy will go either way. But, uh, yeah, very strange. Very, very, very strange to me. But, uh... Mm -hmm. Oh, Biden. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, that's who's running the show. You know, he even came out and said he'd like to sit in his jogging shorts somewhere and run the show from behind the scenes. And that's what's happening. Because Biden, I don't, I don't even think, you know... I. He can't even change his diaper. You know, the, the guy, I don't know how many times the Secret Service said he pooped himself. He, you know, he's, it's, to me, it seems like elder abuse. You know, they, they should just leave the guy alone. And they're all in on it. You know, you look at that wife of his, too. She's some kind of a, a nutbag. You know, they're just pushing this poor guy up. Let him retire. Let him, let him go home. You know, he doesn't need to be doing that. I don't think he can anyway. He's been in politics for over 50 years, robbing and stealing from us. Let him go home. He's already stolen millions and millions. What are they, they going to do with it? He's going to go home and croak. And then, so what's he going to do with all the stolen millions? I don't get these people. You know, I guess it's just, just to have it. Very strange, that's for sure. Well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let you guys go. We ran, let's see how long we've we been going here. It says 82 minutes. Yeah, yeah, he definitely needs to go to a nursing home. Poor guy. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll give him a break after the election. But who knows? They might vote him in again. You know, we got all these illegals coming in. I'd like to see him do an Operation Wet Back like Eisenhower did after the war. He threw them all out. And uh, they say, oh, these are the jobs that no Americans would do. Baloney, what are kids are supposed to do? You know, the kids have to learn how to work. You know, and if, if, they can't get, if they can't get a job, I just seen a thing on here in California. One of my buddies was telling me in California, if you work at McDonald's or any fast food, they got to pay them 21 bucks an hour. I mean, what a joke. What an absolute joke. You don't, you don't get $21 an hour to flip a burger. That's ridiculous. But uh, you got people like Newsom, these people, you know, they're, they get out in that California sun without a hat on and they just fry their brain. The whole outer skin of their brain is completely cooked, you know, and uh, they don't, they, they maybe they see SBF 10,000 sunscreen on top of their head because their brains are fried $21 an hour if you work at McDonald's. What a joke. What's it going to cost? 25 bucks for a burger? Dollar menu is going to be $25 now? Ain't nobody going to do it. And, I, and you watch, there'll be, I saw something on there. I don't know how true it is. I saw this a while ago, but they got a fully automated McDonald's now where there's no people. It makes the burgers. It does everything. You just pull up on either side of it, place your order, pay your money, and it spits it out when you get to the end. No people at all. So $20 an hour. What a joke. What a stinking joke. And all it's going to do is drive prices up. You can't, you can't just raise, you know, that. All the prices are going to go up to match that. So you're not, whenever they say, oh, yeah, it, ma it makes these liberals feel better that they got more money coming in, but it's not more money. They, it's, it's, it's a shell game. That's all it is. They're not getting any more money. It just looks like it. I watched a fellow on there. 
he said uh, they were doing a radio interview from this radio station in California, and he's he's on there. He goes, yeah, yeah, I'm working, I'm working down here at the at the Goodwill. Well, you know, I sweep floors at the Goodwill and I polish the floors at night. And he says, but boy, I sure would like to make the big money. And the the announcer. He said, "What? How much? Big money? What do you mean, big money? How much is big money?" He said, "Well, I'd like you to make it ten bucks an hour." <laughs> and this guy thought that was big money. What a joke! Hey, how you doing, Wes? Yep. Yeah, I'm not feeling too bad. Weak, buddy. I have uh, I have no real good power. I was I was tell everybody I'm the Energizer Bunny with Chinese batteries. Not not uh, it's it's real hard if I sit down, uh, and the chair is too low. I have a hard time getting up and walking slow, like an old geezer. But uh, yeah, it'd be nice if they put them in Gitmo, but they're not gonna. They're those people people like that never go. They're never gonna go to jail. You know, personally, I, I don't think it should be getting more anything like that at all. Personally, myself, it should be firing squad, but but uh, they don't do that kind of stuff anymore because it might hurt somebody's feelings. They might they might get a boo boo. Uh, treason is treason, and uh, you know, let's bring back a good old firing squad. None of this, none of this lethal injection stuff. That's to me, that's stupid. Put them up against the wall and shoot them. You know, just be done with it. I just watched that movie Valkyrie today uh it popped up on my feed and I, I hadn't seen it for a few years i'm gonna watch that and that's what they did to those guys in the end they well, they didn't waste any time <laughs> one and they just brought them right up to the wall boom 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 and uh you're done dead meat put them in a blanket put them in a hole in the ground so but they'll never they'll never do that to these people they're, they're going to let them off the hook and uh because they're running everything and they have the money and the money that they stole from, from us. You know, you look at all, look at all the money that they in taxes that they take from people. I mean, it's a joke. Your voluntary taxes, by the way. You don't have to. If you don't sign the tax form, you don't have to pay it. And some people say, "Oh no, that's a bunch of baloney. Try it. You'll go to jail." I don't know. My father did it for years, so. Yeah, I don't know who's... They're talking about removing the speaker again. They can't get anyone in there. You get a bunch of rhinos. They don't want to rock the boat because they're all taking money, both sides. They're, you know, it's a, uh, two wings of the same bird. And I, I don't care. I, I said this years ago, you know, whether they're a Republican or a Democrat. They're for themselves. They're not for us. None of them are. You know, they, li they like to pretend and sound like they are. But... Uh, you know, they come up with all these wonderful slogans and they try to keep you scared about everything and we're going to fix this. They create a problem and then they fix it. Uh -uh. You know, I, I just get so sick of sick of these politicians. Ever since I've been young, the first vote I had was Reagan and they've never given us anything but the lesser of two evils. You know, nobody, nobody's perfect. I understand that. I definitely understand that. But uh, now we've got Trump and there, you know, he wants to go for these red flag laws. He wants to go for all this kind of crap. I, mm -mm. I you know, people say, oh, well, yeah, but he's our, he's our best hope. Yeah, here we go with the lesser of two evils again. He runs that shit through. We're screwed, guys. You know, these red flag laws, I can, I could call up on you, any one of you guys, and say, yeah, you know something? I think he's a danger to himself, anonymously. And they'll go to your house and take all your guns. And you won't get them back for a year, maybe. Maybe never. So... I don't like that. Then he wants to give the police complete immunity over anything that they do. Oh, he's courting the wrong people. Those are supposed to be servants like him. So now he's going to have his own Gestapo. And, you know, they, they do hit him up and say he's going to be another Hitler and all this kind of stuff. Well, when you start seeing people who are going to do something like that, yeah, it makes me to wear sorry. I just, you know, I'm just going to sit out this vote. You know, I, he's the lesser of two evils again, and I will. I'll just sit out the vote. I ain't, I ain't going to vote for anybody. The, yeah, they all do. They all want to get rid of that. That's just the way it is. 
They don't, they don't want people having guns. Right now, it's constitutional carry in this state. But if you want to leave the state, now, he, Trump did come in and say he wants to make it so if you're an American citizen, you can go to any, any of the 50 states and carry. You don't need to do anything. That's the way it should be, just like your driver's license. You could, should be able to go anywhere you want to go. You can drive in any, any state you want. And uh, same way with your pistol. You, you know, now here, if I want to carry in Pennsylvania, I have to get a pistol permit for Ohio so they can reciprocate, they call it, which is stupid. I mean, you either can carry or you can't. And, and here, to me, I personally think like a courthouse, uh, why do they restrict your Second Amendment right? How can they do that? Okay, I don't see, I don't understand that. Uh, uh, post office. You can't protect yourself in a post office. They've re they're restricting your Second Amendment right. Um, a hospital. Hospital. You can't you can't carry in a hospital. Now I can understand a private place could put up a sign. We don't want any firearms in here, but it seems to me like a federal. That's a law. It's in the Constitution. Keep and bear arms. But yet you go into a courthouse, you they'll take your guns off you. So crazy. Well, guys, I'm going to go ahead and let you go. My little hot pack is still hot. And uh, I hope everybody does really good. And uh, it's, the phone seems to be doing good. This is this little iPhone I'm doing this on now. I got to get the, the big laptop and my camera set up again and my green screen going again. Right now, the kids got the the table. You know, we're using the table to eat off, so I kind of lost my office. When we get the uh, two-bedroom, I'm going to make a little area in one of the bedrooms, kind of maybe tuck it in the back of the closet so I can have my green screen up and and uh, maybe put a desk in there. You know, because the one, the one bedroom is pretty big. The, the other bedroom's the same size as this one, 14 by 12 maybe. And then the, the main bedroom in this, the other house, it's a real big bedroom. You could put a king-size bed in there or two doubles and you still got plenty of room. So it'll probably be in there. Uh, where are you at, Freddie? That you're having a big earthquake? Hey, and thanks a lot for popping in there, Mr. West. Good to good to hear from you again. I don't know why I can't get the uh, I can't get the Telegram on. I went to put it on. I have I have my regular. Uh, it's not Nord. I forget the brand name of it my thing, but it, every time I go to open up the telegram, it keeps kicking it out. So, and I went to, I went, took it completely out, and then I went back into the thing and tried to reinstall it again in my, my, uh, I can't remember the name of my virus protection thing. It, it won't allow it. It's block. It keeps blocking it, and it's asking me for a code, and I don't ever remember putting a code for that. Now, other stuff I can put on there, I, so, I, I don't know what's up with that. I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to try to put it on this little phone right here. That way I can get a, I can talk to you and send you pictures and stuff. So, Freddie, where are you at, Freddie? Were you having a big earthquake? Are you in the Philippines? Oh, they're having an earthquake in uh, Mindanao, Faye. Huh? Uh -oh. wow. Well, guys, I'm telling you what. I got this iPhone, and this is really, this is not good at all. I don't know how this is. It's even discolored. But I, I got it plugged into my little extension cord here because the battery was getting low. This thing is so hot, I can't touch it. This is as close as I can get to it, and I can feel the heat on my face. I don't know what's up. Maybe this charger pack is brand new. is going bad. I, something like that would start a fire. So, well, I hope everything is okay in Mindanao. They didn't get shook too bad. There was an earthquake when I was down there, and the other thing, when I was in Davao City, they had the floods. They had big floods. I, was, I would walk to work with water up to my knees. That place is in a terrible floodplain. And it's just normal for those. Nobody even thinks about it. They don't even think about it. 
but uh, I sure did like that area. I stayed at a nice hotel across from work, and then I could I could just walk in ten minutes. I could be down at this uh, Giano Mall. I think it was called the Giano Mall. There was a couple malls around there, but uh, I really liked it because just all the stuff you could get at the store. But they don't let you bring the durian in the room. You have to eat that outside. Yeah. Well, this one here, I got through the, I got it through the uh, cable TV. It was one of them ones where uh, you get you get the phone, and you, it had a choice of, uh, it had a choice of like three different phones. And I thought, the only reason I grabbed this one, Wes, is because it's real small. I have that, uh, it, it's the smallest, it's the smallest uh, full-service cell phone I've ever seen. It doesn't have all the fancy stuff on it. It's not like the Plus model or anything like that. But I like it because it's small. And it came, it was the only one also that came with a case. You know, that was part of the, part of the deal. You get the, you get the cable, you know, you get the phone with, with it. Now there's no SIM card. It, it's uh, eSIM. It's called. And what's really cool is they did send. I asked them for a SIM, so I have that in the one phone. And then this phone will ring also. So it won't. It not only rings my phone that I take with me, but it'll ring this phone also. But I, I don't ever take it out of the house. Okay, Freddie. Well, I'll hang, I'm going to hang on a little bit just to see what's happening with the earthquake. Big earthquake in Mindanao, Faye. Yeah. This guy, Freddie G, saying it was happening right while I was talking to him. Oh. Pretty, pretty freaky. Wes is on. Say hi to Wes. Faye says hi, Wes. She's been basically my nurse for a while. I like the, I like the Samsung be honest with you, the Samsung phone I have. Now, the one I have right here, it says Made in Korea right on it. You know, the other one said Made in Taiwan. This one was from the neighbor. It says Made in Korea. And it seems to be working pretty good. I haven't had any problem with it anyway for the last year. Wes says hello. When are you heading back to... Uh, Nicaragua there, Wes. Oh, it was a 5-0 earthquake. That's not too bad. Yeah, I was in, like I say, I was in Davao City for six months. And uh, I did a lot of walking. You know, I, di I didn't have the camera back then. I wish I would have. Uh, the one thing I really liked about it, I was there for six months. I only saw one dog poop. And one of the shop owners ran outside and cleaned it up right away. You didn't see the stray dogs. Um, you could you could go out at two thirty in the morning and see a young girl walking by herself, fearless. Crime, you don't none of that crime. But they did have something where these uh, cops they had like this uh, battleship hatched camo that they wore, and they would stand in like these little indents in the fence. And you'd be right on them before you even knew there was three or four of them in there. You didn't mess around in uh, Duterte's town, that's for sure. Oh, cool. There you go, Wes. Yeah. Well, we're starting to get, uh, you know, staying late till 8 o'clock at night now. The weather's been unseasonably warm for this time of year. And, uh, Hopefully we're gonna, you know, we're gonna get warm and stay warm. We had the mildest winter they said in the last fifty years, which I'm glad of. And because uh, you know the cold, this, the cold hit me pretty good this year. But uh, I don't know. I hope hopefully it just it heats up. I think Faye's gonna be a little bit happier in the summer here. It gets hot here. It'll, it'll definitely get hot here. But. Uh, Wes will be traveling down. That would be nice to get back down to Nicaragua. He got his farm down there. I have a, a bunch of pictures of him fixing the house up, and boy, he did a fantastic job, guys. He completely gutted it. 
gutted the place, just like in the Philippines, the way they build them. And I gutted it, and it just laid the place out, just made it a palace, that's for sure. So, yeah, I've been keeping my, my foot up too. The swelling's not too bad on my foot. It's up a little bit now, I don't know why. All right, well, it doesn't seem like that was too bad of an earthquake, and uh, you guys all take care. I'm going to go ahead and let you go. And this is Rickshaw out.